and we are still here. This is Prime Morning. My name is Roslyn Feli. Of course, MFR Deti took us away. We'll be on the headlines where we spoke about the security system in Ghana. It's time for us to have our big interview. But before then, a happy birthday to you, Gladys Tay Sika Ajay. Uh, today is your birthday and it's coming from Simon. Simon says, happy, happy birthday. Enjoy your day. And as I said earlier, the big interview, we have none other than the very own Black Rasta. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good, and you? I'm fine, thank you. It's Bless good sir. to have you here in the Same studio. Same way. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Anytime we hear of Black Rasta, the first thing is, oh my goodness, that controversial <laughs> man. You get that a lot, don't you? Yes, I do. I mean, once in a while, people say controversial, controversial. Well, I mean, we let it slide because, mm. well, I mean, I just see myself as a knowledgeable person. That's who I am. And because this is a country that encourages mediocrity and non-learning, people would always see you as controversial because they are not on the level of knowledge that you are. Mm. Here, with the slightest knowledge, you are a genius, unfortunately. You know, what's the level of illiteracy in this country? So, so when people tag me as controversial, controversial, I forgive them and I say that, well, they will learn. Definitely. Yeah, they yeah, will. yeah, they will learn. <laughs> but where do you get your confidence from? It's like you're fearless. How come? Well, the confidence is from the fact that I want to see humanity change, you see. So when that passion for change is there, you don't fear a tiger, neither do you fear a lion. You look forward. You see, like mm -hmm. Nkrumah said, forward ever. Backwards never. Yeah, it doesn't matter <laughs> what is burning behind you. Just move forward and make sure you reach the destination. So, yes, that is what it is foundationally to see that things work good for the African, for the Ghanaian, for the youth, and for everybody. Talking about that, do you think that Kwame Nkrumah started, what Kwame Nkrumah started has been continued by, uh, you know, his decessors? No, no. Who is doing that? Mm. Nanado is killing Kwame Nkrumah. The president we have right now is an enemy of Nkrumahism and an enemy of Nkrumah. You don't need to go further to understand this. Where is the two Ghana sitting though that had Nkrumah's face and killed, bent, sent away forever? The same government tagged Nkrumah as a dictator government. The same government also came out and decided to discontinue anything that Nkrumah did, including his philosophies. But we understand them. Their fathers and grandfathers were anti Nkrumah. They were those who had this sign. They are a huh? We are breaking away from the rest of Ghana. So when we hear Voltarians say they are breaking away, they were inspired by the Yatiyahu people, led by Balfour Yaakoto, whose son is now the agri minister. See, Nanado's father was an anti Nkrumah. His whole family was anti Nkrumah. So why would Nanado support Nkrumah? When his father, his grandfather, said Furiata and the rest were all against Uncle. This is history. It's nothing to hide. So we understand. But listen, Nkrumah without Ghana is Ghanaless. Really? Ghana without Nkrumah is Ghana. Who named it Ghana? So the man who named it Ghana, you want to subtract him. You would only get negative values. But how is we surviving, although Nkrumah is not here? Today? His spirit is hovering around us. You see, Nkrumah said. That this light that I am putting on in Ghana, several years after I am dead and gone, it will be aloft and burn even brighter. That is what is keeping Nkrumah going. When people are coming into this country because of year of return, they are coming because of Nkrumah. What Nkrumah told them, our values, and not because of any political... Could it not you be know. that the sitting government has projected Ghana in a way that will make the people out there want to come here for year of return? I wish it was so. We want to see progress. It doesn't matter who is sitting there. But this government is an anti Nkrumah government. You know, how? What, what has this government done to bring people in here? Nothing. They only sent people to the airport to drum. Do, 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 but do, they promoted Ghana you know, so much, how? and hence we had people come in. They themed year of return. What promotion? Promotion of loans? Mm. Flying around and begging people for money? What promotion have you given to Ghana? Let us know. Your universities are there, in fact, teaching European history at the beginning of their history lessons. You understand? Your country is a country that is being built on the foundation of loans and borrowing. Black Rasta, let me ask yes. you this. Which, which political party would you prefer to be the sitting government? I would have been so ashamed if I knew. I don't look at no political party. 
My eyes don't see political parties. My eyes see individuals and potentials. Mm. See? I don't like political parties. There's no day you would see Black Rasta done any political party. You will not see me at their rallies. If you see me at any political rally, you means I have been paid good money to come and perform my militant songs. And you can't limit me to which songs I can perform and which songs I can't perform. But do you Same. vote? vote yes, yes. I mean, as a citizen of this nation, mm -hmm. certainly I do. But so before I go into the... Remember okay. that you can vote yes or no or zero. Mm. So yes, when I walk in there, these are the things in my mind. If none of them make sense to me, I vote zero and walk out. I voted. That's my responsibility as a citizen. It doesn't mean that be because this is there, that is there, I must force myself to align. No. I vote zero and I walk out. Black Rasta in the year 2022, 2020, sorry, did you vote zero or you voted for a political party? Unfortunately, in the year 2020, I was disposed, so I didn't vote at all. Okay. But if I had gone to vote in the year 2020, I certainly would never have voted on Akufuado. Never. Who would you because have voted Because his for? first tenure of office had been so disastrous, a killer president, and I don't like him. That's it. It's, it's the fact. You don't like him? No, no, no. How can I like a president who doesn't like the founder of the country and wants to find a way of making the founder of the country look like a villain? A, any nation that has no respect for its heroes is not worth dying for. See? That's it. I can't like a man who doesn't like the foundations of the nation he's sitting on. Seeing the gate bearers who kept the gate. They kept the gate for him. He's sitting on it and turning around to spit back at them. It's not a man who has to be on it. No, sir. Wow. You have a song. I want us to listen to the song. With regards to you say you don't like him. Now, the song title is what? Thief President. Is that why you wrote that song? Well, Thief President does not mention anybody's name. Okay. It says, Mr. President, why you they lie so? Before election, you tell me you be angel. When you sick, you run go a London. When we sick, oh, we die for Kolebo. Mr. President, why you wicked so? Tell me how you they sleep at night, oh. See, they might come, them coming like an angel. But they my thief, them no say they my thief. Uh. Mr. President, you coming like a savior. But you a thief, who oh, say we a we. See, there's no name in there. There is no name in there, Black Rasta. But we have a precedent. And so if you address Mr. President, you definitely is not me. Definitely is not Whoever is in opposition, there is a precedent. So you're addressing that precedent, isn't it? Interestingly, what it is is this. Apart from this country's president, there are other presidents all over Africa. So you sang it for Africa? And even ex-presidents are still referred to as Mr. President. Okay. On that note, I want us to watch the video. <laughs> <laughs> Please enjoy this. And when we come back to the studio, we'll talk more to Black Rasta. You can also send your questions. Of course, uh, our WhatsApp number is there. Send your messages. Let me read it out. Uh, I know you want to talk. I know. I know. So you are, you are invited into this conversation. But enjoy this video. It's a nice song, I must say. Thank you so much. Very nice song. Thank you so the, much. The beats, beautiful. <laughs> the lyrics, oh my goodness. And I, Thank you. You, <laughs> you once faced Parliament. <laughs> you almost lost your job. In fact, some of your jobs had to lay you off. But you never stopped. And you're still going hard. And this time, you're even going harder. Well, as I said, I mean, the passion drives me. Hmm. There's a spirit that enters me any time I have to fight for the people. Mm -hmm. Left to me alone, I can get my daily bread. Left to me alone, I have visas in almost every country that matters. I can move with my family, go sit down there, sing reggae all day, all night, make my money and forget Ghana forever. But that is not my calling. My calling is for the voiceless. My calling is for the people who nobody speaks for. Yes, Parliament, they invited me. What was it about? We. Mm. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I am 110% vegetarian. In fact, higher than a vegetarian, I'm vegan. Mm. I don't drink ice water. I don't eat anything that is made up of uh, flour, white flour, and all that. See? I don't eat sugar. I don't smoke. Parliament invited me that I said 80% of them smoke marijuana. And I said the import, the content of the whole thing was that marijuana should be legalized. 
Please let it happen. You guys are those making the, the law. Do you still think it should be legalized? It's been legalized. Mm. That's why I keep saying that we are several years ahead of them. They fight us now. Ten years later, they realize that, ah, that guy was a prophet. And with their tails between their legs, they don't even have the courtesy to apologize. Look at Ghana Music Awards. When I lashed out at them, they banned me. Mm. They banned me. Hey, he insulted us. We have banned him. Insulting behavior. Hey, really? Black Rasta, do you want an apology from the parliament for what they Well, I'm going to get to that. VGMA. I decided that I would not be part of any organization, any award scheme that would have to vote. By voting, you are buying the award. See, they didn't see the, the reason behind this. I just said that VGMA said, oh, now they are not voting anymore. And blah. I said, oh, really? Yeah. Then bring me my stone. After burning me and kicking me away, making me look like somebody who smokes weed and doesn't think. Come and apologize to me. Parliament should apologize to me. Mm. Of course, yes. Ah, you brought me there. You wanted to embarrass me. You should have been in Parliament to see what was happening. When I was passing by some minister who stretched his leg like this. Oh, wow. They were doing all that. <laughs> they were like infants. Some of them. How did you feel? I felt like King Kong. I felt strong. I felt like, woo! So even those who were not attending parliamentary sittings were all there. Because they wanted to catch a glimpse of the superstar. Yeah, the superstar arrived. Michael Jackson came in to do the moonwalk to some of those people who were moonlighting. See? And they were all watching me like that. And they were talking. They say, and they were bah. You're too known. Yeah, we get you to that. Say, you get me. Go and develop your village roads. Mm. That's what matters. Go and make sure that your people plant gardens in this period of anger. Black Rasta, you did mention that people who, who smoke, you said they thought you smoke weed and you don't yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. That's what it For is. Real. Do you think people who smoke weed don't think? You see, when the matter of marijuana smoking comes out, it demeans marijuana. Marijuana has so many uses. But people just relegate it to smoking. I don't smoke marijuana. I've never smoked anything smokable. See? Should people clap for me? No. There are some people marijuana smoking is good for. Bob Marley smoked it and gave you the best music ever. Today, in heaven, he's sitting there. Some of your gospel singers are in hell. How do you know he's in heaven? Oh, look at what... I mean, if somebody like Bob Marley doesn't go to heaven, I don't want to go to heaven, oh. Who am I going to meet in heaven? I want to hear good reggae music in heaven. I want to see people who are philanthropists. People who supported the ghetto youth. If somebody like Bob does not go to heaven, I don't want to go to heaven. For what? Ah, good people are not going to heaven, then you put who? Mugabe, uh, yeah, well, Mugabe should go to heaven too. I mean, uh, who else? Who, 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 Nanado or who, who else? Should who Nanado go to heaven? Sorry? Should Nanado go to heaven? Well, he's, he's still alive and he has time to correct all his mistakes. I will not place judgment on him, but I'm going to place fire and judgment on those who killed Africa. Seen Mobuto Saseko, Kuku Umbendu, Wazabanga, those guys, those guys, Idi Amin, and all those people. They should not go to heaven. If they go to heaven, I don't want to be there. They should be there alone and continue with their wickedness. You, See? You'd be willing to go to hell because of them. Hey, if there's good in hell, that's where I want to be. If Bob Marley's in hell, take me there quickly. Oh, yes. Wow. Oh, lovely. Okay, so I have some messages <laughs> coming here, and it says, I'm really enjoying Black Star conversation this morning. They said the truth is bitter, but say it and be free. He's saying the pure truth, and I support him. This is from Lizzie from Ashaman. I love your confidence, Black Rasta. Even if you're arrested by the president, God will bail him. <laughs> wow. Are you, do you, are you scared sometimes that they could arrest you? As I told you, there's a spirit that enters me. Every, look, when I get down from here, you would think I was a baby, trust me. Yes, because that spirit, when it enters me, it is just for my calling, and the calling is to fight for the people. A lot of these people that we see around and they are, you know, larger than life. Some of them, we finished school before they even went into class one. So I see them as colleagues, you understand? I see them as, I don't fear them. Why should I? When it comes to Ghana, even Trump said America first. Why should I put Ghana second and fear a human being? What are you going to do to me? The worst you can do to me is to kill me.
And like Nkrumah said, that light that he decided to glow in Ghana would glow even brightest after death. Are you not scared of death? To be afraid is like not trying to be ambitious. It's not in my dictionary. No, for what? Afraid of what? Punishment? Afraid of being beaten? Afraid of being sacked from your work? No. I don't get sad. I work so hard. When I... You know, let, let, let's, go into, uh, <laughs> let's go into your whole conversation of you saying that, you know, the legalization of mar marijuana. Yes. You said that you don't smoke. But do you use marijuana? I do. Okay. I do. The last time I was, I think, in Holland, I bought a pair of jeans made of marijuana. And I like it. I can jump on stage, open my legs. It will never get torn. Do you eat it? Do I eat it? Yes. Yeah. Eating. Last time I ate something that had to do with marijuana was uh, marijuana chewing gum mm. in Holland. We did not even have so much of the THC. But I don't ingest it now. Okay. Because it, it like you said, I'm always high. Mm. If I try to put in any other high, you go over high. I would be the most high. <laughs> the highest. Yes. <laughs> so I normally keep it low. Mm. I don't try it. Hmm. This is for high. You are already high. Why do you want to Go be the higher. most high? <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to be the most high. Not but, at all. but you know, you bashing the president so much, you bashing the government so much. Have you thought of going into politics, probably starting your own political party? That would be the day that I'll go to hell and be in there with the rest of the people that I said would also be in hell. Because politics, what? No. Never interested. Say so you come and say, oh, MP. When I went to parliament, you only could lend it. Now he's one of the Supreme Court judges. He told me, hey, Black, you were extremely famous. Let me sponsor you so that you'll be an MP. I said, me? Forget it. President, I'm a king maker. Why should I descend to the level of a king? I make the king. Remember Samuel in the Bible, mm -hmm. who anointed Saul and then came down to anoint David. That's me. Why should we all struggle to be kings when we can be king makers? Mm. See? Why should we all struggle to be teachers when some of us are supposed to be students? You understand? That is the problem we have in Africa. All these old men and other and the rest of them, they are supposed to sit back and advise the youth. You see, presidency is not a walk in the park. It's a very difficult thing. I remember uh, this man, Krobo, he did say in those days, when he was campaigning for Hillary Man, well, he said something derogatory, but it's funny. He was asking them, presidency, you know, is it easy? Krobo, you say, spoke to you all the time. Mm -hmm. Is it easy? They said, no. Uh -huh. So, uh, who should we give the presidency to that? Oh, somebody who is strong, who can carry the load. Yeah. Now, who are the people who carry the load in Ghana? See, oh, same for not nation. And we think also to my Hillary Man. You understand that? We need people who are strong and very powerful, both physically and spiritually. Then you go and bring all men and put them in the presidency. They have the brain, but they don't have the power. Hmm. So bring the young men in and support them with your brain. Talking about young men, what age are we looking at? The age oh, brackets? any age that is young. I mean, for me, if you want me to put value on that, I would even say 35. Sometimes even 30, depending on the intellect of the person. Once in a while, we have some old men who are even stronger, you see. And they will live, like Mugabe. Mm -hmm. Of course, Mugabe overstayed, but Mugabe was so, 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 so smart and strong, you know. And we have a lot of them, but now we have old men who are sick every time. They have to use our tax money, fly around night and day, and we are dying here. That's the reason for that song. Yes. It's time for us to speak truth to power. Let them understand that we don't fear them. We need to let them know that. Why should I even fear you? Nanado has come into being as president. His childhood dream. Because his father was a ceremonial president. And his dream has been fulfilled, but he has killed our dreams. Look at what is happening in Ghana. How did he kill your dream? Oh, beautiful. Right now, food is scarce in Ghana. And it's even going to be worse. India has stopped exporting wheat. But even America, food is scarce. I like that when you say even America. Mm -hmm. When America says we don't have food, it's like Ghana is long dead. Mm -hmm. You understand? When America says we don't have it, Ghana has gone beyond that a trillion times and is evaporated into nothingness. That's what it is. So when we keep saying America, 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 we have to be careful. 
you, 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 you. Look at what is happening mm. in the country. So then it's, Press a global, so it's, a, so it's a global problem if we are talking about the, 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 the scarcity of food. It's a global problem. It's not just Ghana, is it? I like so we that. we can't tie it to our, the president. Right? Ah, oh Lord, God have mercy. I like this thing that you said. Global problem. Have you looked at the inflation rates mm. in the various African countries? Ghana is one of the highest. We are all in Africa. Why should some country be better than others? You see, Bob Marley said something. He said, the harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. Because everybody is dying, you to go and die and say, so be a win, be so mau. Something like that. When people are dying is when you should stand tough, mm. strong, so that they will call you a survivor. Everybody, they, hey, it's America, cry, Brent, Brent. What kind of a nation are you? You are a weakling. You are not ready to stand up for your people. People are dying, so you too, you want to die. It's a global issue. It's like in the schools when they say, oh, Charlie, this year the students didn't do well. Oh, Charlie, almost all of them failed. Mm -hmm. And then one person comes out and he has the best. What do you say? Everybody gravitates towards you and praises you. Because whilst others were dying, you stood up. Mm -hmm. And the same thing, remember the poem we used to, 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 to recite in school? Whilst others were sleeping, great men were burning the midnight oil. And then they rose to lofty highs. See? That is what it is. See? Yes. So, to be called excellent, like Mr. President wants to be called His Excellency. Mm -hmm. Excellency is not dying alongside the others. Excellency is when people are dying and you stand firm and survive. What do you think he can that's, do that's different it. to make sure that we are, we are not struggling like the other nations are struggling? Oh, beautiful. Somewhere in 1978, if I'm not mistaken, a champion brought something called Operation Feed Yourself. Plant backyard garden. Today, I give you two more years. Watch. It's going to be worse. Hey, people will go out on the street. In some areas, people are going to be dying. They will eat things that human beings don't eat. Because hunger is hitting us. India, second largest producer of wheat, says we are not exporting wheat. To. Indonesia, hey, palm oil, no, is in Malaysia. No, no, no. It's going to be worse. But I tell you, survival mode is now. Mm. People should start planting things, whether you are a farmer or not. It will help you to respect the farming that you have relegated to old men. So that you will learn that farming is not easy. When you plant your to tomato and you even pluck one, you will respect it. But you go on the market and buy a whole, oh, it's nothing. Because you agree with yourself, you will respect it. Eat what you grow and grow what you eat. It's one, is the survival mode I will say for now. But on the bigger picture, hey, our attitudes need to change. Mm. What attitude are we talking Good, about? Nasty attitudes. Look, Nanato can build all the roads, put street lights all over, build one trillion factories all over Ghana. If our attitude is as nasty and stinking as it is right now, trust me, we will go in and collapse everything. We'll steal all the balls and destroy all the roads. That's true. Throw rubbish all over the place. Mm -hmm. I watch them and they are just throwing. That's bad attitude. Remember at independence, Kwame Nkrumah told us that now that you have your independence, the next thing is for us to change our attitude. Nkrumah said it on the day of independence. That attitudinal curse. If there's any curse, the churches should be cutting with knife. I kill you. Die. Die. It should be the attitudinal demon. Not the spirit. No. That demon of attitude, where the employer, because it's not your father or your mother, you would steal time, steal internet, steal petrol, steal whatever. When we were at Multimedia, there was a guy who was stealing diesel from the uh, uh, a friend saying, uh, generator. Hey, the generator that was providing power for the whole building. He's there, go check it. He was stealing diesel. He went midnight, he was a midnight hip hop player. You know, you come at night and pull the diesel into his car. Wow. And then we all will be sitting there, boof, oh, he light off. He. Ah, and then drawing a top diesel. He. he will be one of those sitting there, oh, company with right yeah. That's the attitude I'm talking about. The attitude is when D Black can steal 500,000 Ghana cities worth of electricity and still be part of Doomsaw Vigil. That's what I'm talking about. You are stealing 500,000. But we don't have proof that he stole it. It was alleged. Who alleged? 
Mm. The owners of the power said he stole it. Which allegation? Ah, the so what, owners so, of the so power. So what do you think should happen to D Black? D Black should be made to suffer like any other person. Yes, that's stealing. If D Black had broken into multimedia and stolen 500,000, <laughs> by now, Ghanaians will be talking about because it's a governmental institution. Even in our proverbs, Can you imagine this? This is a proverb. It's an account proverb. Government work, we don't carry on our head, so we drag it on the floor. Hmm. That's what D Black has done, and I'm so ashamed. So should he be imprisoned? I don't believe in prisons. Mm. Mm -mm. Prison? What, so what punishment do you think should be rendered onto him? He has to pay threefold, fourfold, fivefold, depending on them. For me, he shouldn't pay less than tenfold what he has stolen. These are the guys who walk around, we are big, yeah, big businessman, big businessman. That's who we are come for. That's it. Tell me another word for stealing. Eddie, take in without permission. No. Do you know how many people died in the hospitals because of the 500,000 stealing of power? Mm. The black should be disgraced. They should let the whole world see that this is what he has done. So that some of us petty thieves will not graduate into mega thieves like him. I wish we had the whole day, but unfortunately we don't. Uh, time is not on our side. Uh, thank you so much for being here, Black Rasta. Blessed. Give us your final words before you go, where we can get your song again. Uh, if we're looking to you know, download the thief precedent, where we can get it from. Well, I mean, I just want to speak to our leaders. Remember that posterity is going to judge you guys harshly. In the days of Nkrumah, you ate six times a day. Today, people don't even get one triangular meal. You are elsewhere eating and enjoying. If you think what you are doing is good, go ahead. Thank you so much, Black Rasta. Where can we get the song? Well, it's on YouTube. You can stream it on all the streaming sites. And most importantly, check me out when you see that I'm doing a concert. That is where I give you all the energy. I sing it live. You know, I don't mind. Do we have any concerts coming up? Well, we're looking forward to those. Yeah, mm. we'll, we are going to confirm a few of those. Remember, I don't mind. I don't play CD and jump on like Sakodi and the rest are doing. I don't do that. I play live. And I'm telling them or else they will end up like Daddy Lumba. You know Daddy Lumba when CDs were being sold, they were making money, so they didn't want to sing live. Now that CDs are not selling, Daddy Lumba is trying to sing live. And he sings off key from the beginning to the end. I'm not insulting this reality. If I am wrong, tell me that Black Rasta, Uboa. On that note, thank you so much for watching today's show. I mean, Black Rasta is a whole mood. You can't control him. <laughs>